Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build! Where we're once again working on our uh, quadrupedal combat walker, and having a good time doing so. So, you'll notice that uh, we've cut straight into uh, me building stuff. Don't worry, you didn't uh, miss anything. Um, just beforehand, I was trying to futz around... Um, with trying to build, put uh, radar uh, masts on this, and it didn't work so well, and I was just going back and forth, changing my mind a lot, and it was not that interesting. So I've just cut ahead to putting uh, radar trackers um, on uh, the uh, just on the sides of the thing because I hate how inaccurate it was. It's turned out to be a pretty good move actually. So um, here we're testing uh, the uh, new detection systems, and I believe that it's actually worked out quite well. The shot seemed to whiff slightly less. Slightly less, I should emphasize, like this is from the depths. Some shots will whiff no matter what. And I should mention that the only ch real change I did to the Combat Walker, like uh, between uh, episodes of this, is that I changed the main APS shells uh, from using hash to using heat because and also replace the flak with more HE to make the heat shell stronger. And that seems to do a much better job of just um, getting deep into targets and just wrecking um, all their stuff, basically. You can see we're making a lovely mess of this King Cobra. And um, yeah, so it's uh, quite good. And this right here I'm remembering... Oh yeah, import selection. How about uh, we... Um, do something about that and change it to something useful. So we've managed to do that and we've uh, destroyed the King Cobra and that's super cool and I believe this is where... no, that doesn't happen. Oh yeah, oh, never mind, there it is. Okay, so we nearly get a leg blown off by one of the large missiles on the King Cobra and that prompts me to do the thing uh, on that I had on the to-do list uh, right in front of me when I was recording this, which is add uh, missile defenses. I don't remember... No, I don't do that just yet. It's been an hour or two since I recorded this, so I'm already forgetting what I got up to. So, um, one of the great things about the most... What was the most recent update? But a recent update in From the Depths is that things like laser warners and munition warners no longer need uh, AI connections, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes placing down uh, munition warners and laser warners and just... The ECM jammers or stuff like that. It makes it so much easier. It's real improvement in life quality uh, with that change. So I'm very happy with that change. And it also makes sticky munition warners all over this thing a lot easier. So I'm trying to spread them out as much as possible. I'm also trying to make them look uh, somewhat good. The fact that you can now stick them directly onto poles is really, really good. And I believe uh, what I do here... Huh, okay. Uh, much later in the video, uh, I believe there's a point where I go back and look at that and, like, I've failed to put munition warners in a certain place. And here I'm trying to find the right uh, place for munition warners on the sides, because you got to cover it in all directions. And so there's a munition warner right there, and it's super lovely. Yeah, munition warners are always the thing I kind of forget um, uh, with regard to... Um, like making missile defense or like cram or ABS defense. I like have a bad habit of just um, I forget that you need them and uh, you might be wondering what on earth I'm about to do right now with um, stick of the munition warners underneath the thing. Well that is specifically because of the King Cobra and it's really annoying habit of uh, launching missiles that sneak up on you and um, like detonate like underneath uh, your craft. So that's the main reason for that. So yeah, I'm saving frequently, never mind the autosave feature, which I know is lovely. And so yeah, what are we doing now? We're going in here and we're trying to figure out exactly where to uh, stick those missile countermeasures because it's difficult. You don't want to stick them too close to turrets because you never know, the turret could track over them and then make a horrible mess and like right there is an ammo compartment so I can't really stick it there so that's awkward and um, so yeah so there's a bit of futzing around in here like this is still in many respects this is essentially a gunboat on legs 
and like not an especially good gunboat I do have to say like um of course like um, the first time like I said last time uh, with building this combat walker the first time you try to make any specific kind of craft from the depths it's probably not going to be perfect at least it's like much far more likely is that it's going to be pretty terrible but um yeah, this is this is still very much feeling it out, feeling what's right, feeling what works, and um, yeah. So okay, so here is where I actually figure out, like, dude, you got space on the sides, you got a lovely big air gap, so use that. And so I believe we get to show the other new feature that is um, quite recently added. And yes, hitting backspace, just activating free building mode, so I can place blocks whenever. Yeah. That's another super good feature. I wasn't sure that I would be ever be using that uh, when I first um, heard about uh, that uh, feature, but I've been using it so much. It's so good when you already know uh, what it is you want to put in place, and then you just you hit backspace and you do it, and then you hit backspace again and you've done it. And it's just, again, it's a real quality of life thing. It's uh, very much something that just makes building faster and simpler and easier. And it's just, it is, it's like, mwah, uh, magnifico, and other uh, sexy, uh, other sexier languages than, <laughs> than English to express positivity. And so you'll notice I placed an ACB and then deleted it just to connect all the missiles, and this is embarrassing. Uh, I actually end up spawning in a King Cobra in a little bit just to test to see if the decoys are doing their job. And I've just completely whiffed on the fact that, you know, I've deleted the ACB that triggers um, uh, the missile controller to fire. So, yeah, that's kind of dumb. And you see right here on the, I believe this is the port side, uh, it's just all uh, radar uh, target simulators. So, nice, big, juicy radar target. And uh, I believe that uh, medium and small decoys have been buffed, um, again, in a somewhat recent update. So they're more useful than they ever were, and these things are long enough to be very, uh, very uh, strong decoys. Like, these will pull uh, most missiles, hopefully, even if they have signal processors. And let's see, what are we doing? Yeah, you got to fill that up. I didn't actually end up cover covering these, either with hatches or with, um, what do you call it? Uh, with, um, uh, with, like, just mimicked... Um, uh, blocks just for aesthetics and here's where I stupidly spawn in um, uh, the King Cobra uh, neglecting to uh, remember that uh, you know I freaking deleted the ACBs that were are the uh, whole point of the missile defense so that wasn't particularly smart of me I do have to say so yeah that's um... oh and this is I believe no 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 no, no. that doesn't happen yet Quiet, me. Don't spoil the video. Because you already know what happened. And this is the point where I think, hang on, the missiles haven't fired. What's going on here? And yeah, those large missiles on the King Cobra are actually kind of annoying. Especially for a walker, simply because they go straight for your foots. And getting stabbed in the foots hurts. And this is the point where I remember, oh yes, stupid Wally, you forgot the ACBs. So there, I place the ACBs and life is much better as a direct result. And, um, yep, saving the thing, always save the thing. I am actually quite, I am r pretty darn happy with how this, um, thing turned out. So here, keeping an eye out, keeping an eye out, waiting for them. And the other problem with spawning the King Cobra for this, uh, munitions test is that the damn thing only fires its missiles when it gets close. And I kept spawning it too far away, so I don't know why I kept doing that. Oh, and there you see the missiles get launched. And joy of joys, uh, they're working perfectly, they're pulling the those uh, smart bombs away, and still pulling them away. And that's one of the great things about just dumping decoys on the ground uh, when you're playing the land campaign, is because uh, they, have, they don't exactly have the ocean to kind of fall into. It means that missiles will stay locked onto them. And the fact that they bounce so much when they hit the ground... Uh, means that they, well, as you can see, they get launched up, they fall down, and then they bounce again, and that just pulls missiles away beautifully. 
Especially radar guided ones. And so, what am I doing here? This is the point where I decide, I look at my list and think, you know what, we can stick missile interceptors on here. Because especially for this combat walker, it's not particularly fast. 20 meters per second is desperately slow by land vehicle standards. So, it's very much um, a slow thing. And so, it's going to need some cram protection. And missile interceptors, uh, praise be to Nick Smart, are actually very, very good at that. And um, it actually doesn't take much uh, in the way of missile interceptors to uh, make it work. And right there, you see I put in a uh, friend and foe, uh, what you would call it, uh, identify friend or foe add-on. And I always am never quite sure whether you actually need them for anti-missile stuff or missile interceptors. You don't, actually. Like, I can confirm from my testing that you don't, and it's fine. You don't need them. It just works for things that lock on to, like, you know, radar seekers, infrared seekers, that kind of thing. So, yeah, and this particular section, this particular compartment, is a tremendous pain in the butt, uh, really. I went back and forth on this a lot, and here, uh, naming the block, so it's, like, specific, uh, very specific block that the ACBs can, um, uh, control. I love that feature. I really am grateful to, like, and here is, uh, I, if you're watching Ohm, here is your uh, regular shout out. Uh, Ohm is futile, has a YouTube channel. Um, and he also does From the Depths content and the odd tutorial. And it's great because um, he covers stuff that I usually don't. So he's uh, done breadboards, he's done uh, a more updated PID tutorial, and he's done ACBs, and uh, that block naming feature has changed my ACB life completely. It is so incredibly useful, because you just type in the name of the block for the ACB to control, and it will only control blocks uh, with that specific uh, name, um, or at least, very least, uh, with, like, that name being a part of their name. So, in this case, I have... Uh, Name the missile controller interceptors, and now these two uh, ACBs are only controlling blocks with interceptors in their name. And this is where I decide, like, oh, goodness me, I've really made a horrible mess of this compartment because it's, like, really space inefficient. So that's not super good. And also, uh, we've... At the end result of this thing, this uh, craft is very compact, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except it's got pretty vital systems... Um, getting uh, distressingly uh, close and personal uh, with the ammo compartments, which is bad. <laughs> it's not ideal. So, yeah, here's me going back and thinking, jeez, oh, uh, this compartment, this freaking compartment. It's always uh, kind of, um, I don't want to say fun, but, yeah, interesting. Uh, whenever you um, uh, are building something from the depths, and there's just there's some random thing that is a problem. I just was not able to brain with this stupid little section of hull because I did want it to be protected and uh, thinking back on it I should probably go back and um, uh, protect the missile uh, the missile decoy systems a little bit better because they're kind of um, exposed on the interior of this craft right now. That's how much I like my armor. I like armor uh, behind my armor uh, protecting my armor. That's how much I like my armor. But yeah, so... There we go, that's a nice efficient coverage, except there's still missile uh, connectors right above it. And this is kind of the point where I say, you know, bugger it, let's just stick some alloy in there just to cover it up nicely. Can't go mad with the heavy armor. And save the game, and now we've got a bunch of missile interceptors, and this is where I once again remind myself that uh, firing them upwards is a terrible, terrible way to deal with cram cannons, because as you can see, they go up, they waste time flying upward, and then they have to, like, essentially, well, jink really hard in order to catch incoming cram shells, which is less than ideal. So, any second now, we're going to see crams come in, and you'll see these interceptors fail miserably, although we did decapitate one of the turrets, which is nice. And so, yeah, they just fling up way too high, way too high, and, yeah, that's absolutely no good, and so I try to make it work uh, by lowering the, um, the, basically lowering the maximum thrust before locking on. Uh, that doesn't work very well, and so, uh, what, I, what do I do now? I go here, and then I, yep, I change it to use maximum thrust to make them 
Uh, oh yeah, no, I put a start delay instead. And this kind of works. Like, you could make this work if you uh, faffed around with it a little bit and perhaps have stuck the system on a faster craft to give you more uh, time before the crams come in to ruin your life. Yeah, so that, um, catching that cram cannon worked way too late. And, like, it's still not working very well at all. And I believe I'd try one more time to make it work. And it just doesn't work at all. Yeah, so they completely missed. That was useless. So, yeah. Go here. And I just say, bugger it. No, if you want, need to fire them in the direction that the shells are coming from. So unless they're coming straight up, um, that's not the right configuration for it. So I think right here I'm having a think. I'm trying to use my brain, which I only have one of. Which I guess makes sense in an evolutionary sense, but for it's not optimized for playing from the depths. I, wouldn't, I want extra brain for playing this game. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure a lot of us would like some extra brain when it comes to this game. And I also wish that brain um, rhymes with game a bit better, so that sentence would sound cooler. But anyway, uh, so here we are. We're um, basically just trying to do this compartment yet again. Created a little staircase. We're making a stairway to heaven, guys. Alright, so this is the point, I believe, where I'm going like, yeah. Oh yeah, I do this particular section of um, the deck, like, twice. Uh, simply because this is this is them. This is my building habit, and from the depths, I just build as I go. I don't plan ahead, and I change my mind a lot, so like, all the time. And so here, I do this. I waste everybody's time by putting two missile controllers when I really don't need it, and I just you know, it's uh, just freaking like bad. So I've named those. And, uh, let's see, what, what, what passed me, what are you up to? So, this is the point where I realized, dude, you can just stick one missile control in the middle, and that will work perfectly fine. What's wrong with you? Have I realized that yet? Am I using my From the Depths brain? Not quite yet, by the looks of it. Okay, so... Let's see... This is... We are coming. He's gonna. Yeah, this is the point where I realized, dude, like, really. And see, this is what I was talking about. I'm uh, doing that part of the deck again. Congratulations, Borderwise. Uh, you are now very slightly older, but none the wiser. At all. Congratulations. Have a golf map. Right, so this uh, arrangement what I'm doing might look a little bit weird. Uh, but, yeah, you, if you want to have dedicated, like, anti-cram uh, missile interceptors, you have to kind of point them, like, straight in the direction that crams are most likely to come from, which in this case is from the sides, because this is a broadsiding walker, and, um, yeah, so it's pointing in the direction, and I'm not particularly fussy, I don't mind um, these uh, interceptors firing in both directions at once, because it's a handy thing uh, when... Um, the thing is surrounded and it's got lots of interceptors, lots of interceptors, because the beautiful thing about this walker is that it's big enough is that um, its ammo stores are quite substantial. So, uh, spoiler alert, we end up putting quite a fair amount of duck out on this thing and it's uh, it's pretty good. The rule is, is that if you've got excess ammo, you just keep sticking duck out on it until you cannot possibly stick any more duck out on it. Like, that, that, I didn't make up that rule. I didn't make up that rule. That, that, them's the rules. I just follow the rules. But when I feel like it. So now we've got this kind of, um, I think it's quite a good look. I, I don't know. I like the look of that. That kind of, it kind of makes it look more like an upper deck of uh, a functional war machine. And uh, I just noticed that uh, the interceptors aren't firing. And that's bad, and so I checked that, and yeah, it's got the right name. Well, now it has the right name, or so I think. So I spawn in the thingy again, and I make everyone sick by whipping the camera around for no reason. And, um, still not firing. What is going on here? What is going on here? So, think any second now, more crime, yep, and they hurt my feelings, and so now I'm like, oh, Borderwise, what have you done? What have you done? 
What have you done? Okay, that's named properly. Let's go here, check the name in the ACP, and it's the wrong name. There's an extra S where there doesn't need to be, because new name for the missile controller is now Interceptor, not Interceptors. It's just like, this is a, that's basically like coding. It's like you stick the wrong numeral in the wrong place and it's a, just a disaster. So, there we go. And could be better. And I just noticed we get our arse blown off by a cram shell. And that's not healthy, so I decide, okay, we need to quickly fix that. So, I think it's just one more we get to see. Yeah, so, um... Immediate problem is that uh, the uh, interceptors don't fire fast enough and the missiles aren't fast enough. So, right here, go to there. Maximum thrust is like really, really like short flight time, but it doesn't matter because these things, like, you know, they, they're designed to really intercept things that are in incoming. They don't need to chase targets. So, we do that, and so this works much, much better. It just, it's an immediate. Uh, vom of uh, missile interceptors when the crams come in and right here beautiful 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 and so yeah that is um, about as close as you can get to the um, I guess you could call it the trophy system you know the active defense that's used in real life uh, modern tanks and I love this. I sincerely love that. And of course, that one gets through because the freaking missiles are reloading. But I'm reasonably satisfied with this simply because, like, you know, it'll do. It's uh, not perfect, but it will do. So, yeah, I think there's... Uh, nope, there's no more cram shell coming in. But that's okay. Yeah, I love this. I seriously love the fact that um, interceptors can deal with crams because it means that um, uh, those of you who have been watching my channel for a while know that I have a love-hate relationship with LAMS, so laser anti-munition defense. On the one hand, it's a really good system, and it's just it's uh, a very it's one of the it means that laser systems have both an offensive and a defensive use. On the other hand, in the past, like it's well, in the past they've been overpowered, but, um, like, more recently it's annoying that that's kind of, like, on higher level uh, builds, or more sophisticated, more effective builds, you almost always need one to deal with missiles, APS, and crams. Like, anything that can't dodge a cram basically needed a LAM system, and that kind of sucks. So, the fact that we have an alternative that doesn't require a huge amount of space and engine power that's very nice because having ammunition and um, uh, missile interceptors is just it's far more compact uh, than lamb systems i find so yeah i appreciate that a lot and speaking of uh, missiles in general uh, we're adding some missiles here and these are not particularly agile missiles they're just kind of there for uh, missile general missile purposes and once again, I do the stupid thing of like putting two missile controllers instead of just one when one will do. So it's like, what do I? What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it! No, no, you fool! No, stop! Stop! No, what are you doing? This is me trying to work out where all the freaking, um, you know, the identify friend or foe in the stack of fire where that would go if you got two of them. And the answer is, don't use two of them, you wally. There we go. He figured it out. Everybody, everybody, everybody prays past Borderwise. He's a he's a clever lad, and he figured it out. Uh, no, that's not. Um, I'm not asking you to tell me I'm smart. Shush. It's not like I like me or anything. Wow, I'm Sundere at myself, and I'm ashamed I know what Sundere is. Anyway, so uh, these are just going to be standard radar guided missiles. They're just going to be well, pretty standard, like. Nothing amazing, they're just gonna be HEMP and just there for missile needs. That's one of the great things about missiles in From the Depths is like they're really compact and just you know you know what they're gonna do. They're missiles, they're gonna fly at the target and explode. And right there what you saw me do was I checked um whether we can actually um what do you call it? Uh, get away uh, ammunition wise uh, for having these. And also, you notice me putting poles in there just to have some semblance of spaced armor. 
And thinking back on it, I don't actually know if Apollo still can counter Space Armor or not. I suspect they can't. In fact, thinking back on it, I've had several people tell me, no, they can't. So I really should have put slopes in there. But, uh, yeah, so now we're just messing with the missiles and figuring out how to jam as much kablooey into them as possible while still having them be useful. And so, yeah, that is, um... That is something to consider. So, no, there's only gonna have the one fins. And so we're swapping out where the, uh... The, what I literally, the signal processor is. So now we've got an explosive warhead and an MP warhead. And it's all lovely. I possibly also could have messed with uh, the flight, with the um, how much thrust it has, affect the flight time a little bit, and that could have been quite fun. Uh, but I forgot to do that, so um, we did not do that. And so now I'm having a look at my handiwork, trying to think uh, what happens next. And um, once again, the little brain fart that happens here is because I have not stuck a wireless receiver. On that local weapon controller so for a hot second I'm looking at my missiles thinking oh why aren't you firing this because oh wait there we go there we go there we go you know the funny thing about you know local weapon controllers is that they need to be able to talk to your AI just I know it's crazy it's crazy bro you you don't even know it's crazy but yeah so that's that thing sorted and here's where I just you know rudimentary things uh, ruining the spaced armor that's um, on top of it and a bit of stone in there basically just to make it slightly harder for EMP to fry them and now there's some surge protectors in there because why not I just kind of put them randomly in my craft as a kind of habit because they really help and so now the uh, the uh, missiles are firing and the end result is that we're starting to see an almost uh, acceptable level of ducker on this thing and now I believe now I look at this and I think wait why aren't what why have we stopped firing and it's because the thing is uh, well no no we haven't stopped firing. never mind I'm remembering a different part of the video and I believe over here is when I'm looking oh yeah and whoopsie doopsie I forgot to um, change uh, the um, uh, firing restrictions on that one gun, so this thing was actually not using all of its ducker the whole time. And that's embarrassing. So yeah, it's like, just watching this thing walk and fight is so much fun. Because it's like, I guess you could say it's not technically walking, because there is a uh, jet engine in the back that's making it push forward, and it is steering and stabilize through jet engines but you know what it looks cool and that's the main reason to build a walker is that it looks cool man and now now that I've just like uh, finished this thing basically well it'll be finished by the time uh, the video is over um, yeah it's just it's um, super cool and I love it and this is where I decide. You know what? Let's let's uh, let's maximize coolness by getting rid of that, and also a uh, custom thruster color that uh, does not work for me for some reason. And it's the same with the uh, custom uh, missile uh, trails. Uh, that does not work for me. I do not know why. I've heard nothing about it. Like I'm assuming it works for some people, but it's not working for me at all, and that's kind of annoying. I wish I knew why that was. That might just be in beta test, and we're in stable, by the way, so maybe I should go check that. Like, maybe I should. And you might notice I just deleted a turret and placed a different turret. Well, I'm going to place a turret right there. Yes, this is a cram cannon. There is literally no reason to stick a cram cannon on this thing. We don't have enough room for a good one. I was just suffering from uh, cram withdrawal symptoms, as I sometimes do, and I thought, you know what? This whole thing is just for style points and giggles anyway, so we're gonna put a cram cannon on it because I feel like it and it makes me happy. And as it turns out, it did make me happy. This, uh, you notice that you would uh, notice that there's room in the hull for this to be a proper sunken turret, but um, as it turns out later, um, like, uh, there's reasons why I didn't do that. More on that in a little bit. And so this is just uh, me expanding the turret a little bit because we've got the deck space, we've got in a bit of extra width, we might as well. And just 
trimming possibly more off than I actually need to just to get it right so this Tetris is it's acceptable rather than fantastic I'd say flat Tetris is quite difficult to make good but yeah so this is me trying to think about it and it's like no you fool that does nothing that is useless that is useless you absolute banana pudding so this is me thinking, okay, all right, so replace it like that, but now we got different problems. So now we go a little bit wider, a little bit wider, just a little bit. And you also notice this is a frag cram because, again, I kind of felt like it. Also, the great thing about timed 180 degree frag cram is that even when it misses, it can still clip blocks off, and if it's a direct hit, it really, uh, really is quite strong, and it is very, very nice indeed. I should have brought me water bottle in here, because now me constantly talking to myself is uh, making my throat a little dry. Hang in there, Borderwise, it's another half hour to go. So anyway, so now we've got uh, reasonably chonky cram, and the armor on this turret is pretty rubbish, so this is me hoping against hope that the active defenses and just uh, the shape of the hull and it being a very flat turret uh, will be enough to safeguard it against most things because um the whole turret is only three meters tall and hopefully that means that even uh, stuff like heat and hair shells uh that hopefully they just won't hit it so that's uh, this is the um kind of the turret strategy of just making it harder to hit rather than just super armored and, like, yeah, so this turret will probably get disabled really easily, but it's there for fun. Also, it's a very, like, very squat cram. It's a very short barrel thing. Uh, mostly because I just kind of like the way it looked. You notice me, I'm using a lot of 3 meter beams there, just because we the turret is about 9 meters long. And, uh, yeah, I could have used more 4 meter beams, like, in the middle there, but I kind of didn't. Simply because I like, um, I don't know, I like using, like, the same length of beam consistently in a given area. I don't know why, it just feels right. So, here we are, we're sealing off the back of the turret. It's a very square turret. It's very square, very square indeed. And I believe what I do now is because the back end of it is kind of uh, a bit too close uh, to where the missiles pop out, I'm just going to... And like move it a little bit, so I'm gonna go here and I add some hardener pellets because uh, recently I've been experimenting and just adding just a teeny bit of hardener pellet to a cram actually helps um, the shell survive active defenses just that little bit better and also means that it does like full proper kinetic damage or at least is more likely to do proper kinetic damage if the shell does make contact with the target. So, yeah, but then I immediately changed my mind to swap it out to EMP for basically no reason. This possibly wasn't my best move, but I do have a bit of a soft spot for um, EMP crams at the moment. So, yeah. So here we got this uh, quite squat turret. I love how um, uh, having different turrets... Uh, this is just me uh, messing around with uh, uh, the... Uh, the, what do you call it, the vehicle controls on the front there simply so it looks less cramped so that's very nice but yeah I like how having a different turret on the front and back it helps you um, it helps it's a visual cue to help you see which end is which because yes I know I have a canoe addiction which means that um, the um, uh, my craft tend to look uh, the same uh, front and back which can make it difficult to tell which end you're standing on which uh, is a bit of a problem if you're trying to pilot it, and it's also a bit of a problem if you're, um, if you're, what do we call it, if you're building on it. I remember the word building. Building is a good word. I use it a lot. I do it a lot. And here's me staring at the cram cannon lovingly and wondering about it, I guess. And what am I doing here? Otherwise, what are you up to? Yeah, this is the part where I swap it in with EMP instead. Not sure that was the best move. Probably best just to like stick extra frag pellets in there just to really maximize the damage per fragment. And now what am I up to? I believe 
this is the point where... Oh no, I spot a gap and I fill it. What are you up to, Passport Wise? Tell me your secrets. Tell me your secrets, canoe man. So, what did I have to do? Hmm, I'm trying to figure out what I was thinking at this moment. I might not have been thinking anything. That's a cons that is a distinct possibility. You never know. I'm gonna stretch quickly. Urgh, stretchy stretch. And so this is the point where I think, you know what? I love this little Gatling thing. Uh, should we put another one over here on the booty? So I kind of just uh, I kind of uh, put that there, and then I immediately change my mind and go, nah, let's not put that there. And over here, we go here, and I think, you know what, guys, we've got room for an APS in here, so let's make one. And, um, this, the end result of the little APS turret I stick in here is kind of a chin gun. I'm very happy with it. Like, I usually, um, when I make APS uh, to fit, just in whatever space I make for it, often doesn't end up well, and this one, let's face it, isn't a particularly strong one. But it makes me happy when it fires, and that's the important thing. It's also actually quite good at shooting fast, like, um, things. Spoiler alert, I do test that at one point. So we go there, and then we go there, and then we go there, and there's one of the nice 3x3 three three gap for the APS turret to do its APS thing. So yeah, it's going to be an... Uh, the What I'm thinking here is that I'm... Well, just while I'm futzing around with the hull a little bit, I'll explain that uh, what I ended up with here was an 18mm uh, Hesh frag gun. So, like, I'm very fond of 18mm APS because that's as small as you can go, and it's just very easy to get a high rate of fire. Uh, each shell does basically nothing, but um, I just really wanted to get it to work, and also the fact that it's a Hesh shell um, complements the fact that all the, uh, the main, uh, casemate guns, uh, they are all heat shells, so we've got a nice bit of variety there, because Hesh has advantages over heat, and heat has advantages over Hesh. Um, for those of you who don't know, a heat shell, uh, tends to be better against compact designs that don't have spaced armor, whereas Hesh is good against, uh, things that have a wide open space in them, because the fragments just spawn, in the air gaps and they just shred anything in their way and it's a jolly beautiful what. And so here I'm kind of uh, kind of compromising because I don't have much room for this turret. Um, it is a half armored turret so what that means is that the front of it is, is armored but uh, the back of it internally is not so that is kind of a compromise between having a fully unarmored turret with uh, as many components as you can fit in and an armored turret that's protected in case uh, the hull is breached or in case an armor defeating uh, projectile gets tossed your way which is very nice and uh, it does get um what do you call it it does kind of get uh i literally just forgot what it's called it's a i do build a turret well around it a little bit later so right now I'm just focusing on making it pretty for absolutely no reason except pretty. And like th this turret is actually very safe. If it's slinging it on the underside of a walker like this, um, it's very unlikely it's going to get hit in the face because face because simply like once again it's very flat. It actually turns out flatter than this, and I kind of like the UFO shape uh, that it ends up having. And it's got super short barrel. And already I love this turret gap, it just looks, it looks, it makes me happy. So there's six barrels, spacing set to minimum, and we've got our little minigun already, and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, I say. And this is me messing with it, trying to make it look even better. And use this as what applique panels were made for, because they're nice and flat, and they look good. And if you want to make a flat thing, they're good at making things look flat. And that's jolly good. So now, uh, we go down here and we think, hmm, what can we fit in here? And of course, we're going to go with a belt loader, simply because if 18 millimeters, uh, an 18 millimeter APS was made uh, to go with a belt-fed auto loader, simply because uh, the ammo inputs, they reload so quickly, is that um, the thing empties its clips, but it reloads in literally seconds if you have enough ammo inputs, so... Quite handy, quite handy indeed. 
Okay, so this is... Uh, what am I doing here? Borderwise, what are you doing? What are you doing? Alright, so... Here's where I think, yeah, we're gonna need a little bit of recoil, absorption, probably not too much because, like, minimum gauge APS don't have much recoil. This is the part where I think, hmm, we could have more recoil or we could have more ducker, so I stick in auto loaders. And I actually put too many uh, inputs on that because 18 millimeters again, load so fast, uh, you don't really need to worry about that. So, where are we? We're going down here, I'm trying to hunt for a place to stick the ammo customizer, and I remember, aha, wait, we've already got two ammo customizers, we can use one of them, smarty pants, and I delete this one just to see which ones uh, the casemates are actually using, it turned out to be that one, that's embarrassing, so I just quickly uh, undo that, and then I go for the other one that is not actually being used by anything, so deleting that, and checking, and yeah, the casemates are using the correct one, and that's very nice. And Rambot jumped out of the, his uh, or her or their chair in excitement. And uh, now we get to make a 18 millimeter little shell. And so good. And um, this particular like 18 millimeter shells, um, you'll notice, uh, yeah. So squash heads, hash, are not the best thing to use at minimum gauge. I'm just kind of using it because like I wasn't being feeling particularly imaginative. I'd say the best thing to use is like timed frag, or like uh, maybe, like kinetic rounds actually work decently well at minimum gauge, but like, I don't know, you kind of need rail assist in order to make them like properly good, so you need to basically make it a rail gun, and I didn't feel like rail guns, no sir, no rail guns today. So now we're sticking our shells in our gun, right here. And we're going to test it, and it has a pretty decent rate of fire, 600 rounds uh, per minute uh, or so. And, um, yeah, so this is the point where I realized, dude, like, you actually, yeah, you more recoil needed. Or more recoil absorption needed. Let's say, yeah, check in that, check in that, and 686, I believe. Can't actually, I'm watching the preview of this uh, in my video editing software, by the way. That's how I'm syncing up my commentary to what's happening and uh, I've set my preview quality quite, quite low so my computer doesn't hate me and there's a good brrrt lovely brrrt and so yeah that's lovely and I'm not setting any res I should actually set altitude restrictions on that chin gun so because I don't want to wasting its time shooting at things above it uh, this whole walker has pretty terrible anti-air uh, to be perfectly honest with you because most of its uh, weapons are kind of fixed in place or have very little elevation. Uh, the missiles are the only thing, but those missiles are not particularly fast, uh, nor do they are they very maneuverable, so probably not the best thing to go up against aircraft unless I decide to stick anti-aircraft guns on this, which I can totally do, I just realized. I have the room for that. And, um... Yeah, so this is where I decide to stick a second uh, little APS. Uh, on the other end of it, because again, that makes me happy. And the great thing about minimum gauge APS again is because, yeah, they do basically no damage uh, unless you really uh, have a long shell or optimize it. And, um, but they use very little ammo actually, so that's nice. I thought that sentence was going to go somewhere, but I was wrong. I was wrong. So, yeah, like, what are you up to, sir? What are you up to? Okay, yeah, so this is the problem with using the fill tool um, later. It just means you need to do shenanigans in order to uh, make the deck all right again. So now we're play putting our second little adorable gun, and it's so nice, so nice. And, yeah, I've set it to a specific weapon slot. And brrr, lots of brrr. Oh yes, GDI would be proud. So, yep, little chin guns, that's lovely, lovely. And now, I'm just going to combat test the little guns. They do tend to shoot the legs occasionally, but you know what, I'm kind of fine with that. It's only the odd shell that does it, and frankly, like, they do not enough damage to the legs to be of concern. And so, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, this is the point where it's like, you know what, this turret needs flags. So... That makes me so happy. 
And, uh, oh, I believe this bit is where I decided, you know what, just for testing purposes, you should just assign all these weapons, because I'm trying to get into the habit of doing this more often, of just assigning the correct um, weapon groups uh, to all my uh, weapons on my craft, simply because it makes, well, means you can demonstrate them and, like, check them uh, individually. So, yeah. So just doing that for the next while and assigning basically uh, the two main turrets and the casemates all to one and uh, the chin guns, well the chin and butt guns, I guess you could call them, uh, secondaries, assigning them to two, well they're already assigned to two, and then the missiles are on three and that's lovely. So yeah, this thing is coming into shape, it's like, I'm trying to remember... Somebody compared this to a specific kind of historical ship, and I don't remember what it was. Maybe, I don't know, a river gunboat or something like that. Thank goodness for control C, control V. Who would have thought that uh, Microsoft uh, Word could influence game design so well? And same thing again over here. Leave somewhere around here. Bang, bang. Lovely, lovely. Checking all the missiles. We'll check in all the weapons and stuff. Now I'm checking the missiles to check if they're still there. Are you still there? Are you still missiles? Lovely, jobly. So this thing is coming together quite nicely, and it's got uh, it's got the stuff it needs to be a stuff. So yeah, like um. Not the, definitely not the most meta thing I've ever made. Definitely not. So, I believe, what am I doing in here? What, what are you doing, board pass, border wise? I don't remember what you're up to. So, yeah, this is interesting. And this point, I remember, wait a minute, there's a three meter lump of heavy armor that doesn't really need to be there. So, I'm getting rid of that, and I'm getting rid of that, and then. What is you doing? And so this is the point where you decide, you know what, we might as well, we've got that spare engine power, let's put shields on this puppy. And I'm trying to remember where, like, it's been a long time since I stuck shields on anything, so I'm trying to remember where on earth the shield control ACPs are. They're over in uh, this folder, so we're gonna go over here and stick them there. They have not aged well, and I think I forgot to save that freaking prefab, so uh, that's annoying. So, yeah, what's happening in here? Go there. And setting that to that. And I am... I'm still not hugely fond of shield projectors and from the depths. Like, again, those of you who've watched me for a while, uh, you'd probably uh, know that I'm... My hatred for shields uh, historically has been quite deep and bitter. But I'm, a, I'm kind of okay with them now. I am at peace with the way they are. Because they're not they're not essential, which is how it should be, I reckon. But, uh, yeah, they are useful. In the, especially in the sense that they pull double duty as defense against shells and lasers. That's nice. I appreciate that. It means that you basically don't lose much by sticking them uh, on your craft. It's quite lovely. And so, what are you up to? And this is the point where I was, ah, right, this is exposed. We, we might want to do something about this. And I actually did have room to make this uh, particular APS system bigger, and perhaps I should have. Except it's really only there for style points, so... Probably, I don't know, there's a lot... There's actually some wasted space in this walker that I should perhaps use for other things. Uh, yeah, so, here we have... The thing and we're gonna go over there and we're gonna make use a prefab that I established earlier that's basically all in one it's got um, uh, four shields and a butterfly uh, formation and by the way uh, those of you who have been playing from the depths for a while might remember that kind of uh, butterfly uh, pattern and that's what it's called it's called butterfly shields because it's like um, folded like a butterfly's wings um, since shields don't stack the way they used to, I thought uh, for quite some time that butterfly shields were pretty useless. As it turns out, uh, they're not. There is still benefit to using them. And the, re the reason for that is that if a shell is going to pass through more than one shield, 
it'll only uh, count uh, calculate uh, for one of them. Uh, that is to keep shields balanced and also to uh, reduce uh, CPU usage, which is nice. But, um, yeah, it calculates uh, only for the shield that has the strongest reflect chart. So what that means is if you have multiple shields overlapping uh, at different angles, it mean it basically increases the chance that a shell will get deflected because it increases the likelihood that it'll be intercepting a shield with a good angle for reflection. So yeah, it's still it is still worth it to have butterfly shields. In this particular case, I'm using like I'm still not sure if this is the best shield configuration, but um, it's easy. It's pretty easy to set up once you've got the prefab for it. And each one of these shields is not particularly strong. Uh, probably would be better off just using uh, two shields for that. So I might delete half of them and like up the power of each shield by a considerably higher amount. So yeah, that uh, could be an idea. And here I am just placing them everywhere. Here's a, here's a shield set up for the guns, and another one for the guns over here. And this kind of wacky coverage um, also hopefully means that it um, doesn't matter what angle shells fly at, uh, they are going to probably get deflected by something. So yeah, that's a um, real blast from the past talking about that. And it's so nice that shields can uh, project through each other because it makes them so much easier to place. So, like I said before, I'm kind of at peace with shields. And here, since we're, we've are we just placed, like, smoke emitters, uh, all of our craft, we're also now putting laser warners. Um, because I thought to myself, you know what, Borderwise, you, you should get in the habit of putting laser defense on your craft. Because every time you go up against the White Flayers or the Twin Guard or the Scarlet Dawn or something like that, uh, you get um, rudely reminded that lasers exist and they kind of microwave your face. And that hurts. So, uh, yeah, laser laser warners all over the place, redundant laser warners, because uh, that's a good thing. And, yeah, even on the underside as well, because just in case, you never know. Yeah, so this, this, this is a... Uh, I don't want to say it's a very tanky thing, but it's reasonably tanky. And also, I didn't actually set uh, the... Um, the right conditions for laser warners all over this thing because really what I want to happen is that as soon as lasers hit anywhere they you know they all like all smoke to smoke emitters get triggered because uh, that means less blocks get knocked off so leave yeah so uh, oh yeah I remember I spawned that thing in just to check the shields so now we're observing yeah, so there was a bit of friendly fire, but that's okay. Once we're in the correct broadside angle, the little uh, the little uh, the little guns are doing their thing, and they're not doing super good damage, but they're chipping away. They're chipping away. They're doing all right. And that kind of staggered firing is because they burn through all their. Uh, their belt feeders and then it's just the two auto loaders in there just going like blip blip and you see how fast that reloads it reloads so quickly it is in essence uh, those little 18 millimeters are like burst fire guns that go daga 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 and then a little reload and daga 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 so yeah we have a thing that is um, highly resistant to crams and it's got uh, it's got shields it's got smoke it's all lovely beautiful beautiful should stick smoke on that cram turret now. Think about it. So yeah, it's uh, this thing's coming together. So I'm trying to think what I'm uh, doing now. Yeah, I'm just um, it's, uh, spawning it out and then in just to get rid of the scratch marks, the scuffed paint. And I believe what are you up to now? It's checking there. We could actually stick some more stuff on this actually. And, um, yeah, saving it. And I believe what I do now is I test it against a thing with lasers. So, let's check in there. No, actually, no, 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 no. That's not what I do yet. I'm checking. Oh, yeah, this is the part where I pull up a little notepad document I've got that's saving handy um, internet links, including some custom camos I found uh, on Imager. So, 
You'll probably see the link I paste in here is a pretty decent uh, digital camel pattern. So, yep, there it is. There's the link for it. And, um... I look at that and think, yeah, that's alright, that's alright. And uh, I actually uh, go full GDI, which is a Commander Conga reference, by the way. Is that, um... I kind of want to give it a more sandy color, and you like a properly subdued like desert camo pattern. I remember ba remember back to making the Lacusta, which is like my current favorite attack helicopter that I've made. Um, that's a kind of pain in the butt because it's very easy to make desert camo uh, with from the depths too garish, like too bright. So I kind of futz around with this like horrible vomit color uh, for a little while until I decide like no 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 let's tone it down a little bit let's tone it down just a little bit and well at first I paint some gun barrels because you can't have like vomit colored gun barrels that's just not okay so what are you doing all right so paint 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 nice uh, black gun barrel because that looks good. And uh, the simple weapons I already have different colors on their barrels, and so this is uh, next little while is just me running around, uh, just painting things black, like that. Probably shouldn't have bothered doing that. I'm probably going to stick mimics over the top of that. And this is the point where I think, wait a minute, wait a minute, I freaking, I didn't stick munition warners on that. I actually think that there's a 2 meter and a 1 meter pole there, which is uh, less than ideal. So I should go back and fix that. And coloring the detection in, making sure everything is black. Because black never goes out of style. Them's the rules. Once again, I didn't make the rules. I just follow them whenever I want to. So, yeah. And this is the problem with um, sticking multiple subjects of the same type um, around before you've painted them. So this, uh, yeah, a little, a little bit of, a little bit of black there, just highlights, so it's not just one monoculture blob, monoculture. I mean, mono-colored blob. I can word. I know how to talk. So yeah, this is uh, this video is actually reasonably long. I ah, there we go, there we go. I've uh, found a more subdued uh, desert pattern. Although I tend to like sticking arctic camo uh, on my craft, simply because that looks nice. But when you're in the desert, like, I don't know. I don't know. This uh, this looks alright. And the result is a nice uh, camouflage giant walker that totally can hide. Or not really. So this is where I decide, like, hang on, let's test this laser defense. And it's not as good as I was hoping for. Because, yeah, the smoke triggers, but you still kind of see blocks um, flying off. Like, quite a few blocks, actually, and I don't appreciate that one bit. I hate lasers, they can't dodge them. It's almost like they travel at light speed and are very inconvenient. <laughs> but yeah, so, um... Thankfully, like, it's it keeps up with Rambot's... Well, no, the uh, this particular laser craft can't, can't out-damage uh, Rambot's repair rate uh, when there's smoke involved, which is nice. Do smoke uh, clouds still stack? I really hope they do. So, let's see what's happening in here. Oh yeah, this is me just like, clearly like uh, being shot at with lasers isn't it exciting enough, so I turn, so I change the shield colors instead. And um, you'll notice that the, the damage numbers we're getting uh, up um, in the top right corner, they're not super good, but those little chin guns are actually doing a fairly decent job just chipping away at uh, this little fast thing, which is what secondary guns are for, really. They're for dealing with things that the main guns have trouble with. Of course, the missiles are occasionally managing to land a hit, but also not really. Okay, a little bit of EMP, like, um, this, the, this walker is not particularly good at dealing with fast uh, craft. Like, it's the, I think this is mainly... This is kind of uh, something that um, I'll be using against the Twin Guard, and it looks like... I'm not actually sure why those missiles are disappearing. I think it's because the um, damn thing has a LAM system. Like, one that's hard to see. So, yeah. Now this is me tweaking the, um, the laser thingies to actually be working properly. And 
Like, yeah. Okay, so now we're properly smoked, smoking along our whole length. Remember, in From the Depths, smoking is good for you because it protects you from lasers. And what am I doing here? Like, uh, this is the part where I decide, you know what? Uh, repair, repair bot time. Repair bot time? No, repair bot time. And one repair tentacle, because that's always useful. It's always helpful with any craft you make to stick at least one repair bot and one repair tentacle on it, simply because so they can repair so it can repair itself and also repair its friends. So yeah, there's also a huge cost uh, differential or difference, I should say, uh, between uh, between this walker and the thing it's fighting, which I've just forgotten the name of, even though it's on screen occasionally. So thank goodness for missiles. This is why you never leave home without them. So yeah, I believe that uh, there comes a point where I decide, you know what, okay, we get it. This thing can survive lasers, that's all we really care about. I really should uh, tweak uh, all the local weapon controllers on this thing so they uh, fire like only at targets which are appropriate for them. So this, like, I really, did I mention, I really hate the lightning hoods, um, both in Neater and in, especially in Ashes of the Empires, because, um, they're challenging, yes, but they're annoying. The fact they run away like this, it just, the main thing it does is make them, like, really tedious to kill, because once you've got good laser defense, you've just got to sit there and wait for them to freaking die. So yeah, it's probably my fault for not using more lasers and hitscan weapons in general. But yeah, just like I don't like them, they're a pain in the butt. We are managing to deal with this one slowly but surely though. So you know what? Can't complain too much. Complain too much, you will get wrinkles. So yeah, that's basically this uh, combat walker finished. So yeah, so it's got its camo, it's got its turrets. It's got um, a nice uh, flag-covered <laughs> cram turret, which is essential. So yeah, this is me just kind of looking at it for a while. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Farewell.